Welcome to a noob's guide to Gorok. This is Gorok, the great white lizard, which sounds like something you'd hear someone yell at a clan rally. But really, Gorok is part of an elite organization within the Lizardmen that serves as Lord Croak's personal bodyguard and carries out mass slaughter of civilians and oversees the skink labor camps. No wait, I'm sorry, that's the SS. Gorok is a Super Saurus warrior. And they're obviously different. See, Gorok was born to the elite Saurus warrior cast of the Lizardmen, which in Princess Bride terms is the Fezzik to the Slan Vizini. But even among giant fighters, Gorok was marked for greatness. When he emerged alone from his spawning pool, his pale white skin displaying his superiority over the other Lizardmen. And now he looks after these lesser beings, seeing it as his white lizard's burden to protect them, and expects to be served and thanked for his patriarchal beneficence. So clearly, Gorok isn't a racist. He's just a specious. Gorok also happens to be the strongest Saurus alive, absorbing the other warriors in his proto womb so that now he has all the power of a giant Saurus warrior and several tadpoles. But when he emerged, the Slan priest Lord Croak saw in him the makings of a champion of the Lizardmen and asked Gorok the only question that matters. and scantily clad skinks now tend to his every need as he sits motionless atop Itza's tallest pyramid while his attendants massage him with baby oil and whisper praise into his ear holes, assuring him that he looks like a Greek god and all he needs is one good pump to beat Arnold. It's only when Gorok is telepathically called to battle by a slan priest that the cold-blooded purpose appears in his eye slits, and then he's sent out like Ivan Drogo from Rocky IV to break his opponents. The Great White Lizard has fought in countless battles, and his scarred albino body is a testament to a thousand triumphs where Gorok stood at the center of the battle line, his enemies unable to pierce his thick scales, so that he stands like a gore rock on which its his enemies are broken. Gorok is a fighting machine, a creature wholly purposed for war and the slaughtering of enemies, who lives by the mantra of never retreat, never surrender. Because in an alternate dimension, Galaxy Quest was a good film. Gorok's acclaim seems to be not that he's a great fighter, but that he's nigh unkillable, having been run over by a chariot, poisoned, stabbed, shot, bitten, and lanced through the chest by a dark elf. The only thing they haven't tried is tossing his ass to drown in a river like Rasputin, but even then he'd just crawl out again because he's a lizard. In the game, this Gorok the Highlander gets perfect vigor, physical resistance, terror, and regeneration to ensure that wherever you put him, he will stay there and not die. He fights with two unique items, the Mace of Ulamak and the Shield of Aeons. A massive slab of rock cut from the heart of a volcano and then carved by generations of skinks just to give this one guy a shield. Because in communist Lustria, every lizard man is equally important. But while the skinks work, Gorok leads, and especially suited to armies built around Saurus warriors, with a unique right that gives them the unbreakable trait so that they never run, and defense bonuses, as well as lower upkeep costs and extra ranks for Scar veterans, making the most versatile unit in the Lizardman roster even more indispensable. And since he starts in the middle of Illustria that looks like 1980s New York, he and his warriors will be under constant attack as they bop their way back to Coney Itza Island, which is why he gets bonuses to melee defense in his own territory and 20% physical resistance when defending sieges. Because, you know, he's the shield guy, he's, he's defensive oriented, I mean, this is, this is pretty straightforward. But none of that really matters, because Gorok starts his campaign with Lord Croak available at turn one, the most ridiculously OP Lord ever created by CA. Normally, you have to wait until level 15 to unlock this monster, and it makes this campaign go from easy to easy peasy lemon squeezy as all you have to do to win any battle is have Gorok stand there while Croak glasses them from orbit, turning any opponents into pools of unidentifiable red jelly that I guess they then feed to Gorok afterwards, because seriously, what do these guys eat? I mean, it's an entire civilization of giant carnivorous dinosaurs, but there's not one food building. But after the battles, Gorok returns to his temple top throne and strikes his best cone in the barbarian pose hibernating again until he is called upon to defend his people. 
But is Gorok really the character for you to play? Well, if you like the idea of a Saurus version of Powder that can always be found where the fighting is thickest, an immovable object that fails enemies with powerful sweeps of his mighty weapon, or you know, smashes them to bits on his massive shield and then crushes them beneath his tread, then this is your man, Lizard, Lizard Man. And honestly, if that fails, you can always just have him stand there and not die while Lord Croak does all the work. If you're enjoying this Noob's Guide series, that's awesome. But I've kind of run out of recent lords to go over, so it's time to dip back into the past for our next one. So if there's one you'd particularly like me to cover, like one from the recent Empire rework or the Bretonia rework, then uh, vote below. Tell me which one you'd like to see next. Because after all, I keep making these to hide my crippling anxiety over the state of the modern world and put my sarcasm to use other than berating children. So thanks for watching. 